What's up, buddy? I got something I want to talk to you about. And what I want to talk to you about is the Halcyon Star Cruiser, the Galactic Star Cruiser. Not, however, the $6,000 a night, or $6,000 two nights, why you get two whole nights, uh, Disney Hotel. No, this is the Halcyon Star Cruiser as it exists in the world of Star Wars, because it is now officially this giant, stupid, fake hotel now is being jammed into the lore of Star Wars. And it is so much worse than I thought it was ever going to be. We're going to get right into it again. Don't forget to hit that red button, that subscribe button. It's going to make your life a lot better, I promise, when you join the Veto Nation. Now, as I've discussed before, the Halcyon Star Cruiser, they are making an entire friggin' comic book about this thing. Again, this is Halcyon Legacy, issue one. With, a, with an MSRP of $5, because comics are overpriced now. Okay, so you have to spend $5 on what I would argue is just an advertisement for the hotel. Like, is this really an important Star Wars story? No, it's to get you excited about this dumb hotel that they've built. Again, it's I think it's a four-issue miniseries. you got to spend $5 a book. So if you get all the Halcyon Legacy issues, you're spending $20 to, to, for an advertisement for a hotel. And uh, they're trying to make it seem like, no, 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 it's not just an advertisement for a hotel. See, the Halcyon is a very important part of the Star Wars lore. And the way they are trying to integrate it into the world of Star Wars <laughs> is frankly ridiculous. And I've got a little treat for you. We're going to take a look at Halcyon Legacy number one. Now, I can't show every page because I'll probably get copyright struck. But I have purchased this comic book and we're going to talk about it. Let's do it. Now, I think the start of the comic is this is clearly some marketing, okay? Because they're talking about the launch pod. This is the little shuttle that's going to take you there, which we discovered is probably a, uh, what do you call it, a box truck. It's a UPS truck. I don't know if the actual launch pod to get you to the hotel is something different. I think that's just a room you walk into, and it probably shakes a little bit to make you feel like you're moving. Uh, but anyway, here's the, here's the majestic launch pod, and this old man and his granddaughter are very excited to go on the Galactic Star Cruiser. Uh, and here, already they're selling up how exclusive the Star Cruiser is. This man says, these other two people in the pod go, do you know how hard it is to get reservations on the Halcyon? That's true. Except for now, when they're canceling all the reservations, because everybody's like, what is this thing? What do you do on the ship? Again, maybe it'll be fun, but so far, yeah, I'm still skeptical. Now, this is the Halcyon here, and this was the first page where I kind of was a little bit like, wait a minute here. Okay, right here. They get on the ship, they meet a little droid, and the droid asks uh, the little girl, I don't know, she's 12 years old, uh, preteen, whatever, is there anything you'd like to do first? She says, can we go to the lightsaber training pod? Okay. So this this made me pause a little bit. The one in real life, yes, there is a lightsaber train pod on this stupid hotel. Inside the hotel, you block a the fake laser beam with the fake lightsaber. Okay. And that was fine because we go, well, we understand that this thing is not really set within the lore. Like, a lightsaber training pod, that's a thing that, like, Jedi would use, not, you know, passengers on a luxury shuttle. You see, you see what I'm saying? Like, the ideas are starting to not work within this canon. Within the world of Star Wars, there's a big floating hotel that for some reason has a room where you can train to use lightsabers. Okay, put that in, put that in context. Lightsabers are ancient weapons used only or primarily by the Jedi. They're not like fun tools, fun little toys that like kids play with. It's literally a laser beam that slices, could slice your hand off. So why does a hotel have that? Why? Why? And it's and it's for kids. She's like, can I go to the lightsaber training pod? I'm going to assume they're like fake lightsabers and it's uh, maybe a simulated experience. Lightsabers are an ancient weapon. It's not like a fun tourist distraction, or at least it shouldn't be. That would be like if you got on a cruise ship and they said, do you want to go to the medieval training grounds? You'd be like, what, what are you talking, do you want to go to the gun range on our ship? You'd be like, no, I don't want to play with my own weapons at all. This is a luxury cruise. What are you talking about? So this really caught me off guard. It makes no sense. And what it comes down to is 
Somebody went to the guys writing this comic and they said, you need to write a comic about the Star Wars Hotel. And they're like, "What do you, we can't write a comic about a hotel. What are you talking about? And they're like, Disney has said you need to make a comic about the hotel. They don't care. And you have to include every single thing that's in the hotel. You have to have the, the launch pods. You have to have hollow sabacc. You have to have lightsaber training. And I just imagine the guy writing this comic book. I think his name's right here. Ethan Sachs is going, what, what, what do you want me to do? This doesn't make any sense in the world of Star Wars. That you can just get on a, a cruise ship and learn how to use a lightsaber. Like, yes, in real war at life, it's all fantasy. Here, within the context of Star Wars, it's absurdity. They do have a little explanation later on, and we'll get to it. But it's still, it's still clear what this is. It's you have to write a comic book about everything that's on the Star Wars Hotel. Good luck. Now, I'm going to say this comic book sucks because it can't figure out what time frame it's set in. As a story device, the old man uh, talks to the robot, and the robot goes, I remember the last time you were here. He goes, oh my god, you remember that? And then it abruptly cuts to, I assume, Anakin Skywalker, he's got the scar, fighting a guy, someone, I know in the comments you're going to tell me who this is, I don't know, I don't read, I didn't watch Clone Wars, okay? So at some point on the Halcyon Legacy, and this is supposed to be the old man, and is that Padme? She's got her fun little, that looks like a dildo. Anyway... <laughs> At some point, Anakin Skywalker was on this thing. You see what I'm saying? With They're like, we have to not only make a comic about the hotel, but we have to make the hotel seem important. Because Anakin Skywalker was on it. Now you're, on, now you're in a floating hotel that Anakin Skywalker himself used to be on. And they're doing this, they're doing this so haphazardly that this is one page and then immediately goes back to present day. This was so confusing to me. I'm trying to read this comic and I'm like, oh, we're back in time in the Anakin times. And then the very next page, there's no, like, back to the present, like, reminder. I had to go, oh, okay, that's the old man, so we're back in the present. We're about to go back in time again to a different time period. This is a terrible comic. Okay, Captain Keevan right now is dealing with the idea that there are a bunch of pirates. Uh, the pirates have found a signal sent to the Star Cruiser that indicates someone from the Resistance is on board and trying to make contact with them. So the pirates are preparing to board. They think if they can find the Resistance spy, they're going to make some money by turning them into the First Order. So the book is primarily set during First Order times, which uh, is the same time period when you actually go to the hotel. You're going to see First Order troopers. You're going to meet Ray Skywalker. Okay. Uh, and then the little girl goes, I'm so scared. And the robot goes, oh, well, don't even worry about it. Have you ever heard of... The Jedi, again, this is a different, this is a third time period. We have the present time period with the First Order. We have the Grandpa's time period where you saw Anakin Skywalker running around, so pre-Empire. And now we're back in what they call the High Republic era. And uh, this is where, this is why this is becoming so absurd to me. So, <sighs> this the High Republic era is Star Wars' new thing. It's like the young adult Star Wars universe where all the comic books and young adult novels are set. And it's kind of like an era where basically the Jedi were at the top of their power. The Republic ruled everything fine. <laughs> but <laughs> there's so much going on. I want to know who's making these editorial demands. Again, somebody from Disney or Lucasfilm or whatever went, listen, we need a, we need a comic book about the hotel. It needs everything the hotel has in it, including lightsaber training, even though that doesn't make any sense. We need to establish that Anakin Skywalker was on here. And we also need to tie it into the High Republic... Uh, time period that is the focus of all our comic books right now. Also, you have to tie in the First Order because there's what actually in the hotel. And as a comic book writer, I'd be going, I quit. I fucking quit. That's imp This is terrible. We're jumping between three time periods. Again, in the first six pages of the book, we've gone from First Order time, Anakin Skywalker time, and now we're back at the High Republic time. In six pages. And it's issue one. Pick a time period. Why not just start the book here? Start the book right here. Okay, don't show me the kid. I guess you have to show the kid getting on the ship and being excited for lightsaber training. I guess that was an editorial demand. All right, so you got this old lady hanging out with Chewbacca. Chewbacca, well, it's not Chewbacca. It's a, a Chewbacca. It's a Wookiee. And now we have these High Republic guys, the Nihil. This is like, uh, I guess, a bunch of pirates as well. And they're one of the primary antagonists of this High Republic era. So for people who know about the High Republic, I guess, I guess you're maybe making some sense of this. I am not. You know what also drives me nuts, again, is that supposedly this cruiser has been around for, like, centuries? I mean, we know it's at least 300 years old, 
So why are people talking about, like, I can't believe we got reservations on the Halcyon? Like, has no, like, has no other pleasure cruiser come along that is better? Uh, wouldn't, isn't this like going on a 300 year old boat when you could be going on the brand new top of the line starship? I don't know. The time periods in Star Wars never make sense. So they're like, why are they attacking us? Oh my God. We don't know. Maybe they're attacking this hyperspace compass. The gem at the center is invaluable. Okay. They want to get the MacGuffin. Okay. Uh, so we have to make sure the magic globe stays out of their hands is what this lady says. This lady Jedi as a Jedi, don't you just go uh, give it to them? The uh, the lives of everyone on board are more valuable than your hyperspace compass. Like, literally, she's like, we have to kill them all to protect this thing. That doesn't seem like a Jedi thing. I think a Jedi would be like, yeah, that thing's not important. It's not the key to the galaxy. It's not going to save any lives. Give them your stupid thing, and let's avoid a fight. I don't know. I mean, that, that's just how I think a Jedi should handle it. Not risk everybody's lives to protect one stupid space MacGuffin. And now this is where I think things are a little ridiculous. So this is the crew of the ship, which, I again, I have to remind you, this isn't a military ship. These these guys are like private employees. They're, they're security guards. I hate to say it. If I was a security guard on like a uh, cruise ship, and a bunch of Somali pirates showed up with AK-47s, I'd go, all right, take take the boat. take the. I, I am here to deal with, like, passengers getting too drunk and fighting each other. I am not here to stop whatever this attack is. Now, I guess maybe they're paid really well, but I hate to say it, I would just I would just be like, no, give them that stupid crystal they want. I'm not going to fight for a, for a big floating hotel. But the way they talk about it, it's like the writer of this comic forgot, oh yeah, this is just a hotel. Like why not just, why not just give it to the pirates? It's not important. It has no military or strategic importance. It's just a hotel. But they're fighting for it like their lives depend on it. Like look, they're choking on poison gas to protect a big floating space hotel. And this is what I'm talking about when I say I don't think they thought this comic through. I don't think they thought this Star Cruiser idea through that if you want why did you not just make the Star Cruiser a, uh, like an actual military vessel that like you've been invited aboard, or maybe it's a decommissioned military vessel that has been retrofitted as a cruise ship. And then you can tell about all the stories it used to have and all the, you know, there's still weaponry on board. Instead, you just said, no, it's always been a magic floating cruise ship, but a bunch of like cool Jedis had battles on there for no reason. And again, these guys are cruise ship employees. You know, cruise ship employers are some of the worst paid employees in the world they pay you a pittance because they they pick them up in these like war-torn countries or whatever whatever the tourist countries they're taking them to and they pay them like ten dollars an hour to get berated by rich americans anyway here's all our cruise ship employees going it's time to fight for our hotel <laughs> we must we must protect the hotel i i do have to give them credit because these two guys are going I don't really feel motivated to do this. Defend the hotel. We must defend the $6,000 hotel like our lives depend on it. Can you imagine a Disney crew member, a bunch of guys with guns storm into the Galactic Star Cruiser? They're not going to fight to defend that thing, I tell you what. For the Halcyon, for the hotel. We're the hotel staff. We refuse. <laughs> Can you imagine the maid in your hotel? Puts down all the dirty laundry and sheets she took out of there and pulls out a gun and starts fighting pirates. Again, the story would just... Why did you not just make the Halcyon a military cruiser? Okay, then you could tell all the stories of its military history and all the great battles it fought. And then you could say, and now we have retrofitted it into a galactic pleasure cruiser where you can come and enjoy and uh, see the sights. And oh my god, the First Order attacks because they recognize that this... Halcyon Cruiser still has uh, great military power or a secret laser or whatever else. It would be so much easier to write than, again, writing the adventures of a giant space hotel. Now here is where we get the explanation of why there is lightsaber training, again, in a Star Wars-era hotel, okay, in canon is that the owner of the ship, I think that's the owner, Shug, was so grateful to the Jedi for saving his ship and that magic compass that he built a lightsaber training pod as a token of appreciation. Why? How? Why? 
What the fuck does that- Why? Thank you, Jedi, for saving me. I'm going to take the legendary weapon of your mystical order and let kids dick around with it on my ship for fun. How does that pay tribute to the Jedi? Why not build a statue or like a little, I don't know, put a plaque on the ship? Don't go, I'm going to cheapen, again, the primary tool of your religious order by letting kids play around with it for fun. For money, okay? Our paying guests probably have to pay extra to go play in the training pod. If you want to stay past 15 minutes, we're going to charge you an extra 25 bucks. And again, uh, this time period, jumping around. So he tells us the whole story of how they saved the ship from these guys, and now we're going back to the present where we have to go fight pirates. Uh, and then I guess that's going to be issue two. The pirates are attacking. What What is happening? So so did that previous adventure mean anything? Does that tie into a different comic book? Uh, do I have to go read like the High Republic series and now I'm moving on to the First Order comic books? This is a very confusing book to read. You know why it's confusing? Because again, it's an overpriced advertisement for a ridiculous hotel that no one can afford. This is not a story that was assembled based on love for the Star Wars franchise. This was a story written by corporate committee to fit all the checkboxes. Show the launch pod, show the lightsaber, we put Anakin in there for a second for all the Anakin people. First Order's got to be their pirates. Do some stuff with our new High Republic universe. Uh, <laughs> there's so much going on. Three different time periods, all because they want they want this stupid hotel to be the focal point of everything Star Wars. They really want you to believe that this is the most important thing in the entire Star Wars universe. Oh, you don't know about the Halcyon? You don't know about the Halcyon, the famed... Frickin' a spaceship where this old lady and this Chewbacca and we all Anakin Skywalker's there and the blue lady. You don't know about all the adventures of this hotel in space. This is ridiculous. You understand this is ridiculous, right? This this is absurd. Ethan Sachs, writer of Halcyon Legacy Issue One. Buddy, I feel bad. I feel bad with this task they saddled you with. <laughs> can you write can you write? A four-issue miniseries to promote our stupid disaster of a hotel. Yeah, I'll try, boss. I'll try. Ethan, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You, you, you honestly, I think you did the best you could. But this is just a nightmare of a comic book, and I can only imagine what's going to... Wh where do you go from here? They fight pirates? Do we got to expand on the Anakin Skywalker storyline? There's too much. No one cares. Oh, this is a nightmare. Anyway, guys, that's the exciting first issue of Halcyon Legacy, the official Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser comic book. Has any hotel ever had an official comic book before? Does anyone else find this whole thing ridiculous? I don't know, man. Well, let me know in the comics. Were, uh, the comments, were you excited to learn Anakin Skywalker was on board for one panel for no reason? And the First Order and the Resistance spies, and there was a bunch of Jedi 300 years ago. How could you not want to spend $6,000 to go on the same hotel that Anakin Skywalker appeared in for one panel of a comic book? I don't know, folks. I don't know how you can pass up on that opportunity. More cool videos coming soon. Veto Nation, don't forget to subscribe. Star Wars, <laughs> what is going on?